A thousand years ago, when the Vikings roamed the seas, led by their Norse gods, there lived a man in Norway called Eric the Red. He was able and strong, but his temper was wild, and after a fight, he was banned from Norway. So he sailed to Iceland. There he built a farm, found a wife, and lived in peace for a while. But then he began to quarrel and fight again, and it wasn't long before he had to flee from Iceland too. Now Eric sailed off into the unknown sea toward the setting sun, and there behind a wall of ice he found a new land. Eternal ice and snow covered most of the land, but the banks of the fjords were green with grass. No men, no houses he found, but on the edge of the ice lay sleek seals and snoring walruses, and polar bears, foxes, and hares hurried silently like shadows over the icy wastes. This seemed to Eric a good land for fierce Vikings who kept their peace best when far away from neighbors. He sailed back to Iceland for his wife and his sons, and after his friends had listened for a while to his stories of the vast and green lands he had found, many decided to move there with him. Eric the Red had three sons. The one was called Torstein, the second Torvald, and the third was called Leif. And this is the story of Leif. Eric's son, who sailed with his father to Greenland, who later sailed still farther west and found there the continent of America. Leif stood on sturdy feet in the prow of his father's Viking ship as he sailed across the snowstorm sea. The brine stung his tanned cheeks and the wind tore at his hair. His eyes were keen as the eyes of a snake and blue as steel as he watched the rows of waves rising like a thousand fences between him and his new home in the west. Leif's father, Eric the Red, stood at the rudder himself and steered his ship with his huge fists. He led the way for 24 ships that sailed after him as he sailed ahead. For 24 chieftains were moving with him to the new land he had found. On all the ships there was a great squeeze of people and cattle and fodder and food. On Eric's ship were his wife and his children, his servants and thralls, and everything that belonged to him. For days they sailed through mountains of waves and through valleys of water, and Leif saw nothing but sea and sky and drifting ice. Then one day he spied, far, far away, a mountain sticking out of the sea. Yes! Soon the others saw it too, and Eric told Leif to hurry and take the dragon head off the prow of the ship. For gaping heads and yawning snouts angered the spirits of the land, said Eric. Head over heels, Leif climbed up and took off the dragon head. But still Leif wasn't fast enough. The spirits of the land had seen the dragon head, and all of a sudden the mountain coughed. Huge waves rushed out toward the ships. Icebergs crashed into each other with a clang and a din, as if all the glass in the world were broken to pieces. The waves dashed over the ships, and the wind howled. Men shouted, girls cried, cows mooed, pigs squealed. Leif held onto the dragon head and tried to steady the cattle. Eric stayed as if nailed to the rudder and steered his ship so it wound its way over the waves like a serpent. Many ships sank or gave up and turned back, but Eric and 13 other chieftains arrived safely in Greenland. They sailed into a deep fjord and landed at a steep green slope. Trip, trap, trip, trap. Down the gangplank, people and animals rushed to get their feet on solid ground. Fair are these slopes, and here we shall build, said Eric the red. Fair is the smell of the porridge pot, thought Leif to himself, for they couldn't build a fire to cook any food on the ships. Then they all ate their porridge and drank from the brooks, and the animals grazed on the sunny slopes. The other chieftains soon sailed off and took land for themselves in other fjords. Eric himself stayed at Bradley, the steep green slope. There he built his farm and ruled like a king over servants and thralls, and nobody ruled over him but his gods. He sacrificed to Odin, the all-wise, and to red-bearded Tor, and asked them to stand by him. And Leif knew that his father's fierce gods had come with him, for when the northern lights flamed in the dark winter nights, he could see the gods racing across the skies. There he saw Odin riding to battle, one-eyed and huge on his eight-legged horse, and there came thunder god Tor in his billy goat cart, swinging his hammer and driving his goats so fast that lightning flew from their hooves and thunder roared. Leif grew up in Greenland and became strong and cunning as a chieftain's son should be. He sailed his ship, threw his spear, and swung his axe, and from his father he learned to be swift as an arrow and quiet as a mouse. 
he dressed his boat in polar bear skins so that it looked like a chunk of floating ice and went hunting seal and walrus for hours he sat still and silent at a hole in the ice waiting for a seal to come up for air but sometimes he became so excited that he forgot and whispered under his breath i'll catch you and then the seal was gone when the winter storms soared over the house he played around the fire with a white bear cub then he needed all his skill for the bear was strong and tough too and eric laughed until his stiff frozen beard tinkled like bells when he came home from hunting with a six man's load on his shoulders eric himself fought no more for now he was the first man in greenland and all the other norsemen there came to ask his advice and judgment when merchantmen came sailing from norway and iceland he received them well and they stayed with him all winter long he made big feasts in his hall, and there at the long fire Leif heard many stories from the outer world as he grew up. Leif was all ears when a sailor named Biarni told how he had lost his course on his voyage to Greenland and had sighted forest-clad shores still further west. Eric and all his men made fun of Biarni, for he had not even had the curiosity to land anywhere. But for many years they talked about the land he had seen. By the time Leif had grown to a husky youth, there ruled a king in Norway whose name was Olav Tryggvagsson, and now all the sailors who came to Greenland were telling about his deeds. He was one head taller than his tallest man, and generous and jolly, but very violent when he was angry. No greater athlete had ever been known. He could throw two spears at once. Yes, he could play with three swords and run along the blades of the oars while his men rowed the ship. By day and by night, Leif dreamed of his glorious king and wanted to sail to his court. Ships were scarce in Greenland, for there were no woods. But at last, Leif got a ship of his own and set out. He sailed straight east to the islands west of Scotland, and when fair winds came again, he sailed to the Nidaros in Norway. In Nidaros, everything was great and fine. From houses and wharves, people watched Leif as he stepped ashore with all his rare gifts for the king. A Greenland falcon perched on his fist, and a white bear cub walked at his heels. Then came his men with homespuns and furs and walrus tusks and ropes of walrus hide, so strong that sixty men couldn't tear them apart. Leif went on till he came to the door of the king's hall. There he stopped to comb his hair and waited till the king had eaten his fill, for thus it was best to approach the king he had learned from his father. In the great hall, King Olav sat at table with his men, and he was still handsomer than Leif had thought. Now it was a strict rule at court that as soon as the king put aside his knife and spoon, everyone else had to stop eating too. But there sat at the table a little fat man who was so busy eating, he didn't even have time to look up. When the king saw this offense against his royal rule, he moved his eyebrows up and down in wrath, and all his men turned pale. He shall eat till he burst, growled the king and he ordered his servants to put huge vats of porridge before the man. Eat it all up, roared the king. The man ate till his belt buckle burst, his cheeks turned blue, and even his shoelaces flew apart. Then he threw himself on his knees. Kill me, sire king, but not with porridge, not with porridge, begged the man. Then King Olaf couldn't help laughing, and all his men laughed with him, and the little fat man was spared. Now King Olaf noticed Leif standing in the doorway with all his strange gifts, and highly pleased, he gave him a sign to approach. The king saw at once that Leif was a well-mannered youth and asked him to stay at his court. He showed him great favors, and that winter Leif took part in all the games and saw for himself all the king's feats that no other man could equal.